White America, every year you pay taxes, a portion of your income goes to infrastructures, schools, roads, police, but a portion of that money also goes to low income housing. It also goes to welfare and WIC. It also goes to subsidize black mothers who are fixed on the um, government's um, tick to make ends meet. Why, if you're paying so much money into our lives that you can't talk about it? You have a stake in this company, no matter if you like it or not. So why restrict yourself from being able to talk about it? I remember having a conversation with a white man. We was having a decent conversation. I'm not sure if he enjoyed himself too much because he did say something that um, that triggered me to think that maybe he's not really into having this conversation, but it's hard for him to walk away from it because it is an interesting conversation. But he, uh, we was talking about black issues and he was like, I just can't talk about that. And I'm like, why not? And he was like, cause I'm white. I said, so you didn't choose to be white. Like, cause you're white. You can't talk about black issues. What kind of, who told you that lie? And this is what's jogging this conversation. I'm telling you right now, or this video, I should say, I'm telling you right now, who told you that lie? Who told you you can't talk about black lives or or if you're a man, you can't talk about women's issues or if you're old, you can't talk about kid issues. That's some bullshit. You see, all that is divide is conquer, my nigga. That's all it really is, is divide and conquer. The more they keep you on the left and the more they keep you on the right, you are not together talking. Why do you think they got black and white or woman and man or young and old, blue and red? Why do you think they have these things? They want to keep you divided so you won't come together and find common ground. Because that is the neutralized, that's the equalizer of every situation. Common ground. You want to sell something to somebody? Get common ground. You want to neutralize the situation? Get common ground. You want to get a job? Get common ground. That is the equalizer of any situation i don't care if you are a white supremacist let me find common ground with you you will fight side by side me with me it's happened all oh all across um all through history you can hate my guts but the second we both have a common enemy boom we are together we go back to fighting later but we got to take this motherfucker out because he's not only challenging your way of life he's challenging mine the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That is the most powerful quote you should take from this video. Do not be one of those guys or girls when you won't talk about something simply because you are not X, Y, Z. I'm not gay. I talk about gay issues all the time. One of the most fascinating people in my life. Well, I wouldn't say he's the most fascinating person in my life, but he's very, very um, dear to me is my gay friend, Will. We talk about all kinds of shit. He challenges me. I challenges him. I challenge him. You know, he keeps insisting that I call transgenders by the name they want to be named. And I'm, I'm not doing that until I meet the person because this person might be full of shit. I don't know that until I meet them. But I'm not about to change my speech just because somebody I don't know, which is the powerful point. This is a powerful point. How many times have you walked up and got propositioned by a homeless guy for a dollar? And how many times did you tell him no? I bet you told him no more than, more than you gave it to him. But let your best friend say, yo, I'm down on my luck. I need $50. Can you help me out? Not even asking what the problem is or when you'll get your money back. You already reaching into your pocket. What's the difference? They're both down on your luck. What's the difference? They're both human. They're they both asking you for help. What's the difference? That common ground, that bond. You are bonded with your friend. You're not bonded to the homeless person, but even still, you know, your friend is doing far better than the homeless person, but you'll give him $50 before you get a homeless person $1. That's what they're trying to avoid. And as long as you're not willing to talk about issues that might be a little insensitive or triggering or uncomforting because you won't talk about those things, we can never find that common ground. We can never do it because you're too afraid to ruffle feathers. Really? Stop. You shouldn't be doing, especially when you're, when you're paying into my life anyway. You know one big common ground that we all share? Ready for it? It doesn't matter if you live in the suburbs and I live in the ghetto.
Doesn't matter if you have a $300,000 house and I'm just renting for $1,200 a month. Doesn't matter if you drive a Mercedes Benz and I'm driving a Ford Focus. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you and I are in debt up to our eyeballs. Whether your debt is a million dollars and mine is only 7000 At the end of the day, we stop working right now. We will lose everything we have. That is common fucking ground for your ass. You are in the same boat as I am. You just look better than I do. That's it. You drive a better car. You live in a better neighborhood. You have a bigger house. That's the only difference. But if you lose your $150,000 job, guess what? You lose your car. You lose your house. Eventually, you lose your wife. I'm in the same fucking boat. If I lose my Uber job, which is what's happened, I can't drive for Uber. One of the, one of the, as, as goofy as this is, me losing my job at Uber, Uber, even if I, even though I was only making like what, 15, 20 dollars an hour, me losing that, it's challenging me getting kicked out of my home. It's challenging me to be able to keep my car, pay my freaking car note. I mean, my, uh, my car insurance, pay my, my, my little, my nothing. I have maybe 5000 in credit card debt, maybe. And I'm struggling to pay that. $200 a month. I'm struggling to pay that. Meanwhile, you got to pay $1,500 a month in credit card debt. But guess what? Lose your job. You will struggle to pay that, that 20000 or 30000 you got in the bank, it'll get eaten up in two months. That's how much debt you have. You're in the same boat. Why can't we talk about this? You're in the same boat. It doesn't matter what it looks like. At the end of the day, debt is debt. You could be making $150, $1,000 a year. So what? Lose your job. You ain't making shit then. And it'll be a lot harder for you to find a job that's going to support your your your, your expenses the way your last job did. Because you probably had to build up to that 150 right? It's the same shit. The government wants to keep us separate. And you being fearful of talking about black lives or Hindu people talking about Arab lives or 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 the Germans talking about Jewish lives or white men talking about black men or white women talking about white black women or 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 or, or, or men talking about what we're all in a goddamn same boat. The same boat. Don't be afraid to talk. Don't be afraid to share your opinion. Now, maybe you may not have an opinion right now. You know how to get one? Ask questions. Ask questions. Read some books. Because even though you may not know the black struggle, it ain't hard to figure it out. And it's, it's even less harder to understand and, and sympathize with it. I mean, if you was freaking jailed for 400 years to pick cotton and then had 60 years of Jim Crow laws while, uh, while every white person in the, uh, on the planet was getting a house with like zero interest loans and shit like that. Don't you think if that were you going through that, you'll be in the same boat as us? Because last time I checked the freaking trailer parks, they filled with shitty ass white people on welfare. Multiple kids by multiple different ki- bad daddies. They don't even brush their fucking teeth. At least black people brush our teeth. They don't even brush their fucking teeth. You ever seen these bitches? These bitches are ridiculous. But guess what? Everybody wants to forget that part of humanity. It's not a black thing or a white thing. It's a fucking human thing. Our culture is fucked up. Not us. We're not fucked up. It's the culture that is designed is well, I wouldn't say designed, but it's the culture that is is um, structuring us or, or what's the word that I'm looking for? I can't I hate that fucking thing when you, you got it on the tip of your tongue. You can't say it. But um, the culture is shaping us to be this way, because if you grew up without a daddy and you saw your mommy, your mommy going through nigga after nigga after nigga having different. You got different siblings. I mean, you got um, half siblings, different Four or five half siblings. Guess what? You'll probably wind up doing the same shit too. Look at the black kids who are being adopted by these white kids. I mean, white women. And I mean, white families and parents and stuff. Look at these white uh, black. Blah. Look at these black kids being adopted. But look at. I gotta cut this out because this is ridiculous. Look at the black kids being adopted by these white parents. Look at these black kids being adopted by these white people. Look at them. 
Look at what they've come to accomplish. Look how their lives have changed by being adopted by a white family. They're coming up, taking over shit. They're wrecking shit. They're living a good life. Why? Because they was given a different blueprint than blacks are giving their children. It's not the problem of the co- of the, the skin color. It's the culture, the mindset. That's what the problem is. You would deal with the same shit if you had to go through the same shows that blacks had to go through all these fucking years. And every black person that's looking at this, think about that for a second. It ain't you. It's how you was raised. It's your way of thinking that's fucked up. It is not you. If you had a completely different set of rules, a different blueprint, a different upbringing, you will be different. So stop making white people feel ashamed for having an opinion about what they pay for. Stop. Because if it wasn't for them, your ass would be on the street. True shit. There's your fucking 40 acres and a mule. Your Section 8, your schooling, your free roll. Well, I wouldn't say free roll. Well, if you're, pay- if you're not working and you're getting freaking Section 8, yeah, it's free. Your Section 8, all that shit. If you're getting all these government um, assistance, there's your 40 acres and mule, mule now, my nigga. That's where it is. You know how they got rid of Jim Crow? They gave your ass, um, uh, what's it called? Um... Uh, when you get your job, even though you don't qualify, oh man, god damn it, I'm fucking, I forget the name of that shit. Anyway, you, you get a job because you, what is it, um, you got, oh, form, affirmative action. You got affirmative action. That's how they got rid of the Jim Crow. That was the answer to Jim Crow, affirmative action. That was the answer to it. Because it wasn't fair. Now it's not fair, but on the opposite side. So back to the white people, do not be afraid to talk and speak your mind. Don't cower and get all flushed and red in the face because some black person is in your presence. Befriend that person. Understand them. Get to. Okay, here's the best way to do this. If you don't know enough about black lives and you don't know enough about what we go through in our struggle, just listen. Don't have on a rebuttal. Just sit and listen. Eventually, we will ask about your life and then you'll be able to put two to two together. We'll be able to bond on some shit. I was listening to Daryl Davis and this man was able to get hundreds of Ku Klux Klansmen to walk away from that faith because he showed them something different from what they believed in. That's power all he did was bond with him that is it that's my video